Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Laura Jagged, and thank you for listening today to this week's podcast. This is the How to Life podcast. It's a podcast that strives to help you maneuver through your adult years armed with some instruction, some insight, some pro tips, and lots of encouragement. This is episode 54. Life is filled with a lot of work, obligations, commitments, and deadlines, it seems. It can get very hectic, and it's rather easy to fall into a cycle of work, work, work. Don't get me wrong, work is good. It's productive, and it's often very satisfying, but it can easily consume your every moment. It's not intentional. It just seems to happen if you're not paying attention. And this can eventually take its toll on your family life, your social life, and even your health. It's called burnout. You've heard of it. It can happen, but it doesn't have to happen. It's so important to create a balance, to create a space for you. And this is what this episode is all about, the importance of a creative outlet. A creative outlet, what's that, you might ask? It's something that you really enjoy that allows you to release stress and which allows you to escape and recharge so that you can go back to your day-to-day reality with a better mindset and more energy. My guest today is Johnny McLean of Johnny Boy Studios podcast, which is a show about creativity, motivation, entrepreneurship, and more. He expresses the meaning of a creative outlet so much better than I just did and really speaks of the joy and importance that this can add to your life. And if you're thinking, well, this episode's not for me because I don't have a creative bone in my body, hold on a second. The key word is outlet, anything that inspires you and is fun to you. So stick around and listen to Johnny explain how having an alternative expression of yourself can really enhance your life. Hi, Johnny. Welcome to the How to Life podcast. Thank you so much for joining in today. Hi, Dr. Jagged. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. I'm excited. Great. It's going to be a great topic today. We're talking a little bit about the importance of a creative outlet. I think you have some experience in that. And I want to get started on that right away. But before I do that, I would like you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you, what you're doing right now, and what your projects are. Yeah, my name is Johnny, and I have a very diverse kind of Willy Wonka, Forrest Gump uh, creative background to where I studied graphic design, music production, audio production, and all of those things have led me to a job I have now, my day job in a uh, famous footwear company. I work in graphic production for them and project management. But on the side, all of this creativity has led me towards photography, which I've been pursuing, and also to creating my own business where I am helping people. So it sounds like you're already a pretty creative person. And I think a lot of people might think, well, I don't have an artistic bone in my body, so therefore I don't have a creative outlet. But creative doesn't necessarily mean creative in the artsy sense. It's anything that you find passion in or correct or or gives you a relief or an escape from what you're doing but before we get to that all of these things that led you to graphic design were they passions of yours were they fun for you or how were you set on that path to begin with you know early i was always interested in graphic design and i didn't know it so i would look at a magazine cover and you would see the letters behind their head And I always wondered how they did that. Like, did they set up these giant letters and then have someone stand in front of it and take a photo? And then just that natural curiosity led me to dive deeper into it and discover the world of graphic design. And once I discovered it and understood how layers work and understood how color works and everything that goes into making a final product, I just fell in love with it. Was photography part of that path at that time? No, photography came years later. Yeah. So how did you find that? And was that something that maybe opened your eyes to a new creative expression or outlet? 
I had an interest in photography when I was more so focused on graphic design, but I never had the courage to pursue it. I didn't know where to begin. But one day I was working with someone and he had supplied me with a photo and I asked him, hey, do you have anything else? Because we need a wider shot. And we went back and forth. He finally looks at me and goes, go out and take your own photo. Just do it yourself. And I took it as a challenge and I took some photos and I showed it to him. I was horrible at retouching. My angle was really bad, but it let me know that it was something that I could do and something that I could dive deeper into if I just took the time to pursue it. Did something awaken in you or something spark in you when you did that? Where did that lead you? It led me to see that some of the other things that I had studied earlier really did apply to the photography space. So knowing graphic design, I could see the shot that I needed before I ever took the picture because I knew what the end product was. This is going to be used in a print ad. This is going to be used on social media. This is a headshot. I could see the final product before I ever picked up the camera. Did it give you any relief or something to look forward to that was enjoyable just for you? Yeah, it kind of started as just for me. But it was one of those things that I looked at and I said, you know, I think if I actually studied and if I actually applied myself to this, I think it's something that I could be good at. And just having that awaken in me made me want to pursue it more just for me, just because I thought I could be good at photography if I went further into it. And so I did. And as I I went further into it, I found a community I have a mentor now in the photography space. He's really great. I realized the more I pursued it for myself, the more I could help other people with this gift. How would you define creative outlet? What does that mean? I think a creative outlet is a way to release something out of yourself that isn't necessarily required by someone else. It's something that is stirring deep in your own soul, that is not something that anyone else is asking you for, but it's something that's asking to be released. And I think all of us have that in us. And it doesn't necessarily need to be taking pictures. It doesn't need to be painting a picture. It doesn't need to be any of that type of creative outlet. But I think all of us have something in us that we want to do. We want to pursue. We want to see come to light just for ourselves. That's a good answer. I was going to actually bring this up. A lot of people think that creative outlet is artsy, painting, photography, sculpting, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. It just, it's something that you enjoy. Yes. You don't even have to be making something or creating something. You could be doing something. For me, it's playing this sport called pickleball. Yes. I can't wait to get out there when I have been uh, spending a lot of time on one thing, let's say how to life, to shift gears and head into that world, it is a great relief. For me, It just it's not just about exercise. Or it's not even about social. It's about living. I, I feel alive. Right. You feel your power. Yes. You, you see yourself improving. And no matter what you choose to do, playing chess, doing puzzles, yeah. writing stories, gaming even. That is an outlet. Why do you think that's important? I think because we were all called to to be more than just someone who has a nine to five and then comes home and pays bills. You know, there's more to life than just doing this kind of mundane existence. Yeah. Day in, day out. Yeah. You get into that routine. Yes. So true. That has happened. Well, you know what? That happened to me. Uh, Oh, it happened to me too. (laughs) (laughs) And anyone out there listening, perhaps you think that is you. It may sound like you. Perhaps you are young and your destiny has been determined for you or it appears that way. And it doesn't have to be so bleak. You can pursue other things and still stay on a, a path that maybe you even feel might be a best path for you. But the creative outlet doesn't take you away from that path. In fact, it can enhance it in a way. Let's say you are a corporate attorney, which can be a stressful, maybe mundane job. Yeah. The creative outlet gives you energy. It clears your mind. Yes. So that it can even enhance your current job. 
It can enhance your relationship because you're feeling better. Not only your relationship with your partner or your children, but your relationship with you. You end up liking you better because yes. you got to experience your power doing whatever it is that is fun for you. Agreed. You agree with that. You've had your own experience with that too. Oh yeah. We all have this creative energy in us. And when you release it, you show up better in the world. The more you are true to yourself and the more you allow yourself to express that creativity, the more you're going to show up better for your, your spouse, for your boss, for your peers, for your neighbors, for everybody, yeah. for your community. You just for your have dog. a better version of you. What sort of things could you say to someone who's like, I just don't know what I like? How do you, how do I find my passion? Mm, that's a good question. I think one of the things everyone should do is just sit down with a piece of paper and just write down something that you're interested in. Just list, just do kind of like a brain dump and just list everything that you're interested in, what you've always wanted to do, something that you've always wanted to pursue. It doesn't matter how outlandish it is. If I want to be a real estate mogul and own 35 pieces of property in the next year, just write it down. Yeah. Okay. Whatever it is. If it's you wanted to write that book or you want to be an actor and be on television, allow yourself to just dream and to envision what life could be like if, and then write down what comes after if, but give yourself the permission and the space to just envision it and release whatever's inside of you. As a wise person once said, it doesn't cost anything to dream. If you don't know what your passion is, you just try different things. Right. I tried a ton of things. What sort of things have you dabbled in before you found what really inspires you? So I mentioned that I studied music production and that I studied video production. I actually have another podcast that I started. I put out a ton of episodes and then it just kind of, I wasn't interested in it anymore. Now it is around live music because I loved to attend live music, but there was no live music in 2020. Mm -hmm. So I kind of put it on the back burner and just said, this isn't a passion of mine anymore. I was a dance major for one whole semester in college until I realized what was involved with being a dance major. And then I realized I did not want to do that. Right. That wasn't a passion of mine. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've tried a couple of different things that you dabble in and then you realize this is not what it looks like from the outside. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be yeah. your lifelong thing. It's just right. a creative outlet. It's just an expression. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll work for a little while, like your music production podcast. That was good exactly. for a while. And then yes. it just kind of fizzles out. And that is okay. There does not have to be an end goal. There just has yes. to be a current goal. And the current goal is it gives you some sort of pleasure. Exactly. Yeah. So tell us about your podcast that you're doing right now, the one that's active. The Johnny Boy Studios podcast. So a passion of mine currently is to build a business that will one day replace my nine to five job that I can become 100% self-employed. And so what I'm doing on the Johnny Boy Studios podcast is I am documenting my journey. I'm sharing the tips and tricks that I have learned along the way. I'm bringing on really fun guests. I just had my first guest on and it was phenomenal who is a model, by the way, and he dives all into talking about pursuing your own creativity. So that was a really great, great episode. I really love that one. Number 16. And the reason you're doing that is, yeah, maybe in the future, you'll turn this into a career pivot. But right now, it's fun for you. It's so much fun. And I am currently writing a book that I hope to put out this year. So that's cool. What is your book about? It's what to do right after you launch a business. And do you like the writing aspect as well? Is that an outlet? I do. Yeah. It's another way to express my creativity. What are you doing with your photography right now? Sorry. I mean, are you using it towards this business or is it still kind of a creative outlet and expression? Oh, I'm absolutely using it towards this business. Yeah. So <laughs> photography is one of my main pursuits in the Johnny Boy Studios business. You're super creative, Johnny. You're classically artistic. And I don't want that to be intimidating to people who maybe aren't 
they're not geared towards that, but I still want them to find ways to find an outlet. I know someone who found stamp collecting. Now, how is that uh, artistic or creative outlet or expression? The fact that this person can be absorbed in it, can look for it, can hunt it down. It's like a treasure hunt. That is a creative expression. I know someone else who didn't want to play any type of sports, tried a little guitar, tried a little painting, nothing really clicked. Not really athletic at all, but found aerial silks. Oh, cool. She loves it. She can't wait to get out there. It works for her. It works for her. I know another couple of people, they love boxing and it's not for the workout. It's just they love feeling their power. That is also an artistic creative outlet. So it doesn't have to be art, painting, photography, guys. It could be anything that you find fun and passionate about and makes you feel good. My coach loves to collect model trains. He collects them. He builds them. He has a room in the back of his house. It's just full of model trains. Yeah, but that's his thing and that's his escape. And that's where he goes to sort of decompress, regain some energy, clear his mind, and then he can go back out and interact with his family, his wife, and his job. Nothing to do with his day job, nothing to do with his coaching practice. It's just his way of expressing himself and being creative. He gets to build these awesome model trains. Everybody needs that. So if you don't have it, I really encourage you to just list it like Johnny said, list some things that you think are interesting, even if you think it's impossible for you to accomplish. And then as I said, just go and try things. If you're in high school or college, there are electives or clubs that you can try out. Just try it out. You can do that even into the adult world. There's all kinds of intramurals. Parks and recs have activities, whether it's athletics or art or music or language or travel quick trips that you can take. Go out and try things. It's extremely important for your mental health. You have to make time for yourself. So fill it with stuff that satisfies you, that enhances you. And like you said, it doesn't have to last forever. You can just try something today. If you don't like it today, try something else tomorrow. And here's one of the other side things that we can do. We touched on it a little bit. Like it doesn't have to be forever. It doesn't have to distract from whatever your job is or whatever you're doing. But if you really love it, you can pivot in the direction of a side hustle, make a little money from it perhaps, or completely change careers. And that's fun too. Yeah. Having a creative outlet can definitely lead to an extra source of income or a completely new career change. Johnny, where can we find your podcast or find more information about you? If you just look for Johnny Boy, one word, J-O-H-N-N-Y-B-O-Y, just look that up in any podcast app, I should show up. And the podcast is Johnny Boy Studios. My website is johnnyboystudios.net. And there'll be more information there. Johnny, thank you very much for coming on today. I really had a fun talk and it was great bantering with you about it. Thank you so much for having me. Having a positive outlet of some sort is so important for your emotional and mental health. Oftentimes it takes a while to allow ourselves this pleasure. I mean, it took me a while, but you don't have to wait until you have completely exhausted yourself. My wish for you is to find your creative happy outlet sooner than later. If you have found your thing, please let me know. I would love to know what's out there myself. Maybe I'll give it a try. I'd suggest you give pickleball a try. It's the fastest growing sport in America, and I can't even tell you how fun it is. I can play for three hours and not realize all the exercise I'm getting because it is that much fun. That is my personal outlet. I hope you enjoyed this interview. You can find the show notes for this show at howtolife.com slash 054. I have some other great interviews queued up and ready to go for the next few months, so I hope you will join me every Tuesday, which is the day this show goes live. Thanks for listening today and for your continued support. If you have a chance, I would love it if you would leave a five-star rating or an awesome review if you're feeling really inspired. I would be very grateful for that. Thank you. I'll be here next Tuesday, and I hope you will too. 
I hope that you are enjoying the day and gaining some great momentum to carry you through the rest of the week. Make sure that you take care of you. Be kind to yourself, speak kindly to yourself, and make sure you have some fun because life is great and so are you. It's all good. You got this. Thank you.